Beneath the Pacific, scientists are watching in real time as the seafloor off Oregon surges upward at an unprecedented rate. This is direct evidence that axial seamount's magma chamber is pressurizing fast. For the first time in years, instruments are showing a clear warning. A powerful force is building in the deep, and no one is certain how far it will go. What exactly is triggering the surge, and how much time is left before the next event? On the screens inside NOAA's monitoring lab, the ordinary rhythm of the Pacific is gone. Lines spike sharply across seismograph traces, their peaks crowding closer together as the seconds tick by. Hydrophone spectrograms pulse with bursts of low-frequency tremor, layered over a background of constant restless noise. At the same moment, bottom pressure recorders anchored deep on the caldera floor report a steady drop in water pressure, evidence that the entire seafloor is lifting upward. This real-time stream of data feeds straight from the Ocean Observatory's initiative cabled array, a network of sensors stretching hundreds of kilometers offshore. Researchers shift their focus from routine checks to urgent analysis, eyes fixed on dashboards as new quakes are logged and pressure curves steepen. The magnitude of these changes is impossible to ignore. The caldera's uplift rate has doubled in recent months, and earthquake counts have surged to levels not seen since the last eruption. Every instrument, seismometer, hydrophone, and pressure recorder confirms the same story. The volcano is inflating, magma is on the move, and the system is approaching a critical state. Scientists know these signals are more than background noise. They are the first real evidence that axial seamount is entering a new phase of unrest. The core question hangs in the air. What is driving this surge beneath the seafloor, and how close is the system to its breaking point? On the caldera floor, the numbers are unambiguous. Precise bathymetric surveys repeated year after year reveal the volcano's surface rising at a rate between 16 and 25 centimeters annually. Multi-beam sonar grids compared side by side show clear vertical change, more than a foot of uplift at the caldera center since the last eruption. Mapping teams pore over these difference maps tracing the contours of new elevation and confirming that the deformation is not just a statistical blip, but a broad, measurable swelling of the seafloor. The uplift is not uniform. The greatest rise centers on the caldera, tapering outward across the summit. Each new mapping cruise brings updated grids, and the trend is undeniable. The caldera floor is now as higher higher than it was in the months before the 2015 eruption. A mapping crew led reviewing the latest data put it plainly. They said they are seeing over 20 centimeters of vertical rise in a single year. That is the fastest rate recorded since the last eruption cycle. These figures transform abstract signals into hard evidence. The seafloor itself is moving and the change is happening on a human time scale. For the scientists watching these numbers climb, the implications are immediate. The volcano is not just restless, it is measurably, quantifiably inflating, and the margin for uncertainty is shrinking. Beneath the rolling surface of the Pacific, a network of fiber optic cables stretches out from the Oregon coast, branching for hundreds of kilometers across the ocean floor. This is the backbone of the Ocean Observatory's initiative regional cabled array, a real-time scientific infrastructure built to watch axial seamount every second of every day. Since coming online in 2014 and 2015, the array has delivered a constant stream of data from more than 140 instruments, each one tuned to a different thread in the volcano's restless pulse. On deck, ship crews and remotely operated vehicle pilots work in tight coordination to maintain this underwater observatory. Each summer, research vessels such as the Thompson launch expeditions to service nodes, swap out pressure sensors, recalibrate seismometers, and deploy new hydrophones. Remotely operated vehicles descend to the caldera floor, guided by live video and precise navigation to plug instruments directly into the cabled junction boxes anchored on the seabed. These operations keep the array running with minimal interruption, ensuring that even the smallest changes in seafloor pressure, seismicity, or vent chemistry are captured and relayed to shore in seconds. At the heart of the system, Bottom pressure recorders track vertical shifts in the seafloor to within millimeters, while ocean bottom seismometers record every micro-earthquake beneath the caldera. Hydrophones pick up the low-frequency tremor of magma moving through rock, 
and high-definition cameras monitor hydrothermal vents for sudden changes in flow or temperature. All of this data is streamed live, allowing researchers to watch axial's inflation and seismic swarms as they happen. Deborah Kelly, Chief of Regional Cabled Array Operations at the University of Washington, puts it simply, we are not just getting snapshots, we are seeing the volcano's behavior in real time, 24 seven. The array turns axial from a remote mystery into a living system under constant surveillance, ready to capture the next critical moment as it unfolds. Axial Seamount story is written in cycles, years of slow swelling, sudden collapse, and a restless return to life. After the 1998 eruption, researchers noticed a pattern. The caldera would gradually lift, sometimes by more than two meters, then drop abruptly in a single day as magma escaped to the seafloor. Bottom pressure recorders tracked almost three meters of subsidence in less than 24 hours before the 2011 eruption, and that event became a turning point, showing that seafloor deformation could be used to anticipate eruptions on a calendar scale. The 2015 eruption followed the same script, with steady uplift, a sharp spike in earthquake swarms, then rapid deflation as lava poured from the rift zones. Now the instruments show the same cycle playing out again, with new urgency. Over the past year, earthquake swarms have intensified, with daily counts crossing the 1,000 mark, levels not seen since the days before the last eruption. Seismologists use swarm hypocenter modeling to map these quakes, revealing clusters that trace the caldera ring faults and the upper rift zones. Crack propagation imaging, built from thousands of microquakes, shows fractures forming and migrating upward as magma pressurizes the crust. The inflation rate, now exceeding 20 centimeters per year, matches or surpasses the pace recorded ahead of the 2015 event. Deborah Kelly, a volcanologist with decades of experience at Axial, says the system is behaving with remarkable regularity. When scientists see this combination of rapid uplift, intense swarms, and shallow faulting, it indicates the reservoir is approaching its breaking point. The implication is clear. Past cycles have set a precedent, and the current escalation fits the same pattern that led to eruption before. Scientists are watching for the next trigger, knowing that each new quake and each centimeter of uplift brings the volcano closer to its threshold. Axial Seamount sits nearly 470 kilometers off the Oregon coast, its summit resting about 1,500 meters beneath the surface. This distance and depth act as a natural shield, placing the volcano far from coastal communities and well below the reach of everyday ocean waves. When axial erupts, events unfold quietly on the seafloor. Magma seeps out through fissures and builds new layers of basalt, and the overlying water absorbs nearly all the energy. Unlike shallow or coastal eruptions, these deep sea events do not send shockwaves through the ocean, and they do not raise dangerous tsunamis. Scientists at Oregon State University and the U.S. Geological Survey emphasize that Axial's activity, while scientifically remarkable, poses no direct threat to people or infrastructure on land. The style of eruption is effusive, not explosive, and the vertical motion of the seafloor, though measurable in meters, remains too small and too deep to disturb the surface in ways that matter for Oregon's shoreline. For those living along the coast, Official updates and guidance are available through NOAA and local emergency management agencies. The message from the experts is steady. Axial's unrest is a story for the seafloor, not a source of panic for the beach. Superheated water bursts from Axial's black smoker chimneys at temperatures that can exceed 340 degrees Celsius, hot enough to melt lead, yet life flourishes in the darkness. Tube worms, crabs, and dense microbial mats cluster around the vents, drawing energy not from sunlight, but from the raw chemistry of the Earth itself. These ecosystems survive where pressure is crushing, the water is acidic, and metals precipitate out of vent fluids in shimmering clouds. Scientists track even the smallest changes in vent temperature and flow, knowing that shifts can signal magma rising closer to the surface. In recent months, the instruments have held steady, Vent temperatures remain above 300 degrees Celsius, and the chemistry is consistent with ongoing magmatic heating. The monitoring network streams this data live to shore, updating every few seconds. According to NOAA's latest forecast, the volcano is primed. An eruption is expected by the end of 2025. 
Until then, every sensor and every vent remains under constant watch, ready to record the next moment the seafloor breaks open. Right now, axial seamounts' restless signals remind us, Earth's most dynamic forces often unfold unseen, deep beneath the waves. As scientists intensify their watch, the boundary between certainty and surprise remains razor thin. In this ocean frontier, vigilance is not optional. It is our best defense. What does the deep hold next? <laughs>